I am in Northern California in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains where my parents live. This also happens to be where I grew up. And this place is very special to me because I spent my youth here, three and a half acres. What a great place to grow up. Three and a half acres, deer, turkeys, all kinds of critters. But the key thing was this little creek in the front yard. So this little tributary here is, it runs year round, flows year round. It's colder, it doesn't have much flow, maybe half a CFS or something, I don't know. It's pretty, pretty small in here. And the winter it gets pretty big. But I thought, well, a tributary means that's where fish should be spawning. So as a kid, I somehow, and I don't even remember how I did this, I obtained, uh, it was 100 or 200 eyed up fertilized rainbow trout eggs. And they got shipped to me. I, I can't remember how I got them. But anyway, I get these live eggs and I built a little fish hatchery. And it was so cool. So to build my little fish hatchery for my little rainbow trout babies, I took a five gallon bucket and I drilled a hole in the bottom with some one inch PVC and I ran that PVC upstream. Gosh, I don't know, it's probably like a hundred feet or something. Whatever it took to get the head of the water to gravity feed down through the line to the bottom of the bucket and be able to fill it up uh, to the top and then I had a little hole up here with an outlet spigot that went back into the creek. Now inside the bucket I had some rocks like that, little river rocks. And then on top of those I put a piece of window screen, just like you'd have in your, you know, your house window. And then on top of that screen I put a bunch of gravel that I just dug out of the creek and then I poured those live eggs onto the, onto the gravel on top of the screen. And so what happened was that water would fill up and it kept a fresh flow of water going over those eggs. And I thought, well, it's kind of like a simulated uh, spawning bed, right? So I'd go and check them. And after a couple days, the eggs were all, they had uh, sediment all over them. And I thought, oh man, I killed them. So I was kind of bummed out. Actually, I was really bummed out. And I didn't go check it for a few days. And then I thought, ah, uh, it was just too heartbreaking for me to think about my my little project died, so I, I probably gave it a week. And then I came back down and thought, oh, I'll just take the lid off the buck and take a look and get rid of my hatchery. Well, there they were. They had all, all but like a few had hatched. And those little wigglers were hanging out down in the rocks in the bottom of the bucket. I was so stoked. It was so awesome. And so then I thought, well, I will maybe give them a little time to grow. And if I can clip the adipose fin like they do at regular fish hatcheries, then I can tell if I ever catch one of my little my little babies but then we had a big spring storm and it washed my hatchery out and off they went and so I'm sure the fish survived I mean they got washed into the creek but I had no way of ever knowing if they ever survived but what a just what an awesome way to spend your your, your youth just hanging out on creeks making fish hatcheries catching trout and uh, so I, I'm forever thankful for this place and the opportunities it gave me and the lessons it's taught me and uh, just so happy my folks still still have the place so I can come visit.